So we just finished posting our posters. We're getting to a final poster image. But this is not the way that they would be printed. So if I gave this image to a client and they wanted to print it professionally, like say do a poster campaign for, for a band or an album that they're promoting or a movie poster, they don't have millions of colors to print with and they don't have the custom fine art printers that we have in the lab that can match RGB really well. So this is a good time when we're dealing with kind of professional layout to talk about printing requirements for professional printing. And that kind of printing is called offset four color lithography. So if you go to assignments, I mentioned this before, and we scroll down to assignment six, the one we just were finishing, you'll see that I give you slides in the middle that's an exhaustive ex explanation of CMYK color separation. This has to do with printing, just like I gave you an exhaustive explanation on digital coloring before. And on the next project, an exhaustive explanation of digital painting. So this is all very, very technical, but also can be really, really fun creatively. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. That's because those are the four professional inks used on white paper to print everything in our printed world. Anything that doesn't use this process is a fine art print of some form. Now, how do you make multiple colors that aren't just cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, if those are the only inks you're using? For instance, how do you get green? Well, you do it through what's called offset lithography. So you're taking little dots, you're breaking the, the flat colors into tiny dots, and then you're putting them offset from each other. You can see it with little stars here, with dots here. And the most common way is something called half-toning. So if you take a magnifying glass to anything printed, this is the kind of thing you'll see. You see these dots layered on top of each other. And those dots are made of only three colors and then black ink, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This is an artist that designs things digitally and then silk screens them with color using cyan, magenta, and black, and yellow, right? And then overlaps them and we can see their Behance page. And so all of these are printed with silk screens just layering these, these primary colors. And I show this because this is an example of what they would look like if you didn't break them up into dots. And then he animates them. So this is a, a very labor intensive project. It all starts digitally with outputting these for each color, that's the separation, then layering them on top of each other. So this color with this color gives you this, and then adding the third color, and then adding them all together, and then animates each frame that way in order to get animation loops that are actually all hand printed. And you see the little misregistration that happens so why would someone do this instead of just animating a GIF all with the millions of colors in the computer? It's because when you print things by hand or you understand separation by hand, you get all these happy little accidents. Like, so hand printing means, this is silk screen. You know, for something to be a physical print in the world, there's some, there has to be something IRL that happens with ink and paper. So these are all printed with ink onto, he uses cardboard, onto paper. So when I mean hand printing, it means you're using your own hands to actually run the print. But you wouldn't get any of these little glitches or any of these little offsets if you just did it all digitally. So 
if you don't want it to just be blocky, really flat color like this, then you have to separate each plane of color into dots. The most common dots used are called bin day dots, and they are in a half tone pattern, which is because they're a half drop like bricks in a wall. So after the first line, you, you push it every dot over by half. And this gives you a 45 degree angle print angle. So if we look at this, this is only printed with black ink on yellow newsprint, right? So you zoom in on it. The reason it looks like there's grays is because those black inks are separated into these dots at this different angle in this half tone pattern. And that is Benjamin Day. That is the guy who came up with this printing process in the first half of the 20th century. So we call them Bin Day dots after Benjamin Day. There are other ways to separate besides Bin Day dots, which is the half tone. There's also it's called indexed color or indexed dither, which does it more erratically, kind of in a, in a random pattern, like old dot matrix printers. But either way, you got to take your physical inks, which are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and you have to separate them into their individual colors and into their individual dots, then layer them all on top of each other to give your final color print. One way to understand those dots is that they're each printed at a different screen angle. So a screen is another name for film work because you can only print one ink at a time on professional printers. So first you run the yellow because it's the lightest color and it's the one that has the most flattering dot angle. You'll see here, it's just horizontal and vertical. That's a 90 degree angle. Another way to say 90 degrees is zero degrees. So that's the book that's going around. You can see those screen angles. Then you sometimes print cyan next, though I like to do magenta next. But cyan is at a shallow angle of 15 degrees. Another way to express that is 105 degrees. Then you print magenta at 75 degrees. And then on top of all of it, you print black. And black is always at 45 degrees because it's the one that looks the best. And that's the darkest, most contrasted color that goes on top of all the others. You add all those together and you get images like this in printing where if you look up close, you'll see all those dots overlapping each other at different angles. And because they overlap each other, instead of overlapping exactly, you'll get little rims of color around them, which are intentional, and they give you what are called uh, Gaussian roses. You see the little circles that appear? That's because of all the very carefully designed over, uh, offsets, which is why it's called offset printing. So you get this little rosette pattern from these four different angles. So I need you guys to know the colors of CMYK. I also need you to know their angles because when you set up your own work this way, that is important. I'm gonna show you that with the poster we just designed. Once you understand it, you might find that it's a nice aesthetic to use as well. And there's a lot of artists like Roy Lichtenstein that play with this printing technique in their fine art. And this is a digital artist that intentionally uses the bin day dots only on the skin tone of, of um, this is Chip Kid, but only on the skin tone of this vintage Wonder Woman coloring, just to kind of play up its retro nostalgia. We see that in this Wonder Woman print, sticking with Wonder Woman, where the only half toning you see is in her skin tone so that they can stick with just blue ink, yellow ink, and red ink, and then the dark blue is the black. But the, the red ink, when separated that way, makes it look like a flesh tone. Then you have movies like Into the Spider-Verse, which heavily use half toning in their design to reference old comics and use that throughout. And then anything you see printed, even when it looks like it's just grayscale, is actually printed with these four inks. Three of them are colors, and black, because black is not a color. But it's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, all at these different angles. So if we zoom in on that little dot, you can see the rosettes, the Gaussian roses. 
And then, of course, color printing uses them as well. I like this slide or this image because you can see the offset and how it works. So it's showing just about as much of every ink, even when they're all printed at about 50% here, with the 50% screen. Here are some other examples. Half-tone screen prints in the wild. So we've done everything on my digital coloring handout that you can find under links and in the assignments. Um, up to adding an offset border around our, our coloring. But CMYK color separation is the next step we would need to do in order to make it professionally print quality. And usually printers will do that for you. You know, that's part of the training of being a, a, a lithography, you know, professional printer. But it's really important for you to understand it because it changes your colors. So again, if we go back to this assignment, and if I were to give this to a printer, what would they have to do to print it professionally for an album cover or for a professional poster? And you can't do all of this in Photopea. So I have to go to Photoshop for this. This is kind of a specialized video for our freeware class. And I'll just say this is all about color separation and what you need to know for your final. But basically, what we're going to do is take this image and we're going to separate it into its four colors. Right now, this image is what's called RGB mode. If we go to channels, which we've never gone to before, we can see how the computer sees the colors of this image. And RGB stands for red, green, and blue. That's because the light primaries are red, green, and blue. That means with light, if you mix the red lights with the green lights, this is my image. If you take out the blue lights, this is what my computer is able to create. In my computer monitor, there are three colored lights, red, green, and blue. They can be LEDs, they can be plasma, they can be cathode ray tubes and old monitors, right? But there's only three lights. The cool thing about lights is they can be dimmed to different intensities, not like ink. So if I add all three lights together, wherever the white is, all three lights are turned on all the way. Does that make sense? Wherever black is, all the lights are turned off all the way. So when I isolate it to just one light bulb, you'll see that the computer automatically changes it to grayscale. Not because it is grayscale, but because this is how the computer sees it. If it's black, it's turned off. If it's white, it's turned on. And if it's gray, it means it's turned on at a certain intensity, like 70%, 50%. 22.6%. That's just for the red channel. If I turn them all on, I see all the color. Now let's change this to what it needs to be for printing, using ink instead of light. And I go to image, image mode, CMYK color. And this is just my JPEG. This is a flattened image. So I'm going to convert it. Does the image look that different? Let's look in our history and toggle back and forth. So this is RGB mode. My history. This is CMYK mode. RGB, CMYK. RGB, CMYK. I don't see any colors that are changing dramatically, but it is mixed completely differently. And you can see that when we go to channels. Now it's no longer RGB, it's CMYK. If I isolate the channels, let's look at just what black is doing. This is black. This is what yellow with black is doing. This is what magenta with yellow with black is doing. And this is what cyan with, with magenta with yellow with black. Let's take out the yellow. This is the magenta and the cyan and the black. Why do you need to know this? Because often a client will be limited in how many colors they can print with, especially for things like t-shirt design. So you, you use your channels to customize uh, the colors and the range of color you can get. All right, let's get into brass tacks now. How do I make it so that they actually match what I was showing you in the slides? 